6.36 in the morning on April 27th. Yesterday in the afternoon, I tried to um, lie down and sleep, but I didn't really, and then I heard these um, sort of sublingual things in my head. Somebody talking about a stroke. Let's see, then I started to work, went to sleep again, then I see a like a brick arch, either a window or a door, then a cat on the floor, and then the cat's on the floor looking up, and the cat transforms into a lion, a lioness. Um, and, yeah, in fact, when I woke up, I went to work on the stream about, um, or to, to work on making a notation for the dreams that I had had a couple nights ago, which included, um, I don't know, it, it included warnings about Chris's mother and linking Chris's aunt Sylvia to my classmate Sylvia and um, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, and my cat Lion was killed by a directed energy weapon. Um, so this is about, you know, me trying to stop more people from getting killed. Especially people that are related to me, but not only people that are related to me, you know. Um, but, you know, people in general. One of my primary goals right now. Um, 5 p.m., image of a drone trail with the idea, I don't know how, how accurate this is, but image of a drone trail with the idea that our, the drone trails are adversely affecting Chris, Chris's health, and then I heard two knocks on the door right as I was writing this, uh, which is a n negation to what, you know, I know, I know that, um, the remote neural monitoring, when you're actually writing something longhand, they can seem to be able to know exactly what I'm saying. Um, so song in my head is Madonna's Medellin. I think that's how you pronounce it, Medellin. Um, reminding me of Chris's history with cocaine, which also is linked with white lines. So um, that song came into my head afterwards. Um, in fact... All the cocaine's been around all the years at Satyricon. Something to, um, I might be able to learn something by tracing the history of cocaine because it seems like cocaine has been linked up with this for a very long time and I have a feeling, you know, that, that partly what this song is about. Um, and interestingly, you know, when I came to Portland, I had been exposed to all this media about grunge music in the Northwest and heroin effects on people and all this kind of stuff. You know, what people started to, what I was told was cocaine was actually huge. And um, what Chris told me as I began to learn his history was that he was introduced to cocaine a long time before he was ever introduced to heroin. And in fact, heroin was sort of presented as an um, anecdote to cocaine almost, you know, or an a, an alternative or, you know, so, and then also that, um, injecting cocaine in Portland and Seattle was a big deal. And, um, that's something that doesn't get brought out. And it's interesting, not only that it was a big deal, but that nobody talks about it. Like, um, and people hardly talk about cocaine anymore. We talk about the opioid epidemic and everything, but what's going on with cocaine? I don't even really know. Um, is it just people, it's, is it gone or is it, no, I don't think it's gone, you know, but, um, you know, things, the landscape might have changed and it might not be as, um, available as it has been in the past, but I have a feeling that one of the reasons we don't hear about more cocaine is because there's a lot of, um, establishment power behind cocaine, a lot of establishment power behind, in fact, cocaine, I think, uh, was sort of like a, um, almost accepted means of, um, like, you know, transaction, you know, the way I see that, that
Things like construction materials seem to be an accepted means of transaction, even though it's corruption, um, and things like that. So um, I keep coming back in my mind to this old movie. It's a silent movie called The Mystery of Leaping Fish, and it's in the public domain. It's available online. Um, that and Sherlock Holmes and stuff like that, and the way cocaine shows up in, in those types of media from 100 years ago. But I think, well, I don't remember Sherlock Holmes as much, but um, Mystery of Leaping Fish kind of, it's a, it's a comedy, it kind of brings it out, you know, the um, links between this game and cocaine, I think, as well as other things. Okay, um, so then I have the idea of the Madonna Vogue song. And the idea of being in a cell, and a double cross above the cell. This is m m much later at night, I think. So a double cross, what does the double cross mean? I don't know exactly. I mean, obviously to double cross someone is to betray them. So the idea of being in a cell and a double cross above the cell. So we are in a cell because we've been double crossed. Um, and then I, I drew this cross because I'd seen this cross on, um, somebody's Facebook page the other day. I think that might be a Greek Orthodox cross. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure why it looks like that. And it's a double cross with a third cross that's slanted on the bottom. Maybe that has to do with this situation in some way. <laughs> I should talk about this song because it's directly related to the Vogue Club in Seattle where um, which is in turn directly related with sub, sub pop artists. I, in fact, I should just talk about the Vogue club and what I know about it, what I've learned about it since I've been here and working with Chris. Chris used to play there a lot. And as I've mentioned before, somebody very closely connected to that club was, um, supposedly had a mother in a rest home behind our home with the windows facing our bedroom windows, me and my daughter. I don't know if she really had a mother in that rest home, but um, I'm quite certain that there were um, cameras pointing into our windows from that location. Her name was Claudia. And she lives in New Orleans now. And then it looks like I've written Russian mine. I'm not sure if that's what it actually says, but I write construction guy. Maybe it's as a mine, maybe it's some type of mine, but I don't know, but it's a construction. So I know who, I know what this is. This is a construction company that's linked, I believe, with some of this construction that I new construction that I've been seeing around Portland started by someone Russian. So um I will look at that. I feel like I need to look at um Russian influence in my life because Russians have come into my life off and on. I think with um, agendas that hidden agendas. Image of front of shaved fish album. Examine it carefully. I will come back to that. whatever gets you through the night. So apparently that song is important. Medellin song, and then maybe the lyrics slow down, poppy. By the way, I, you know, I've been thinking about the different meanings of um, poppy, you know, also P-O-P-P-Y, and even Medellin, the way it's supposed to be pronounced, I guess. I, I always thought it was Medellin, um, but it sounds like it's more like Medellin. And it sounds like meta, which means like a larger, you know, sort of overview of something. And gene, which I think is coded as, you know, it's French for Jean. Jean or Jean? No, no, it's not. Jean? Jean. Jean. Well, it, kind of. Um, it looks like Jean, but I think it's pronounced Jean. Um, but anyway, um, Jean, like jeans, blue jeans. I think it has to do with the color blue and being clothed in the color blue. Um... And it seems like Jean and Genie and all that kind of stuff um, 
relates to people who give out influence and power in this game. So and blue gene too. Metagene, so metagene. And so the metagene might be the cocaine part of this. Cocaine part of this is huge, isn't it? It really is. And it's something that I've completely not even talked about or looked at. I've been looking at, you know, medicine, which also sounds like metagene, medicine. And cocaine was a, originally a pharmaceutical drug, as a lot of these were, and sometimes still are. Um, yeah, so... Um, and I think there's something about this where it's like this is touchy area because it, the truth is that the United States government has been doing this double dealing with cocaine. They have been in speed too and other drugs too. They've been dealing them, these drugs. They've been putting them into our communities on purpose. And then on one hand, and then on the other hand, they're throwing people in jail for distributing and even using these substances that they've been putting into the communities. And this seems, to, looks to me like genocide. I mean, I don't know what else you would call it because especially when you look at the imbalance of people that are thrown into prison. So it's going to be hard for me to talk about this because I'll probably get angry if I start really thinking about it. I try not to, but you know, I mean, what, what are you supposed to do when you're, you're faced with stuff like this? You know, you're supposed to not be angry about it, but you know, I, I guess for self-preservation, maybe it's good to, you know, moderate, but um, especially when it's affecting people close to you. <clears throat> but you know, the same thing is true of guns. <clears throat> Sense of the whole thing being a highly manipulated situation. Um, yeah. More than has been... More than that has been erased, looks like on the album cover of that. Okay, so the album cover is significant is basically what this is saying. There's more to this dream that got erased. And there was a lot of, it was a lot of um, dream erasing last night. A lot of dreams that I just don't remember. Flash vision to tarot number seven of, the seven of cups of the hooded, veiled, covered figure. Um, I don't have, i I don't have a whole lot to work with on that one right now. I mean, I've showed that card, but that's the one with the hooded veiled figure in the in the cup. I'll look at it briefly. So, <clears throat> I pretty much find this cut this card mystifying. There's this face, but it's kind of it looks almost transparent and bluish. It's got um curly hair and you know, closed eyes, it's just a head on the, you know, this one cup. So I'm not sure what that is supposed to be about. Is it a ghost? Is it um, an idea of somebody? Is it, you know, I don't I have no clue. Then on the other side of the hooded figure is this snake that looks like it's um, about to approach the hooded figure. And the hooded figure itself has this red, you know, its hands are, you know what it looks like? It looks like one of those um, photographs from that camp. Abu Ghraib, where they didn't they put somebody on it and cover them up with a hood and something like that? I don't know, but um, it's got these um, this uh, red glow around it. You know, that might be the idea that I saw that mountain in that dream and it was kind of a gray mountain. It kind of looked like that a little. Is it gray? Yes, it is gray. That's actually sort of close to that gray mountain image that I saw. So maybe I should look back at that dream. Maybe that's partly what that is. You know, it's got this castle that kind of reminds me a little like of a Disney castle. It looks like it's kind of just part of the rocks. I guess those are rocks. It's blue also, like the head above it. Um, some jewels. I assume those are jewels. They're colored discs. and Then a laurel, which um, indicates victory. But the cup holding the laurel appears to have a skull shape on it. 
So that could be something deceptive or it could be something dangerous or it could simply, I don't know, it could be the idea. Yeah, I think it is because it's the idea of, hey, you won, but then they kill you or something like that so that you don't really win. So it looks to me like it might be the idea of a hidden um, danger in something that looks good at first. And then there's this blue dragon. So on one side there's a blue castle and the other side there's a blue dragon. And with this um, tongue that looks like an arrow. And the dragon itself is kind of um, twisted up into, it looks to me like the shape of a bee. So dragons on one side and the castles on the other side and then there's the laurel and the jewels and then over here it's like with his head and the snake and it's um, all in these clouds. So I guess it looks to me like the snake and the dragon are kind of linked and the blue head and the blue castle might be kind of linked. And then the jewels and the laurel might be linked. So, um, again, and then there's the person, the black dark figure in front, looking at all of this. With you can see the right arm and the right hand with five fingers out. So when I think that the way this is coded, the right hand, the hand with five fingers is sort of the hand that is. Um, you know, it's the implications is that this number five is linked with something negative, but yet also powerful, which I think is sort of represented also by the pentagram. By negative, I mean um, there's a dark side. But I also sort of feel like it's linked to um, the game switching. So if the, if the five fingers are on the left hand, that's the situation that we've been in. If the five fingers are on the right hand, that's a change. So it looks to me like this is describing the situation being changed. And then this is the array of, you know, some so it looks like an array of choices of some sort. But I don't know if that's exactly what it is. And I haven't, you know, as far as me and everything like that, I haven't really un understood what it means to actually turn this around. My focus has really been on getting my rights restored because from my point of view, everything that's happened to me, there is a path to um, restitution. You know, there has been because we have a legal system and that's the way, you know, it's, I expected to do things. And it doesn't look like anybody expects to do things that way. But it just makes sense to do things that way because it's, a, it's an established process. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to, you know, take everybody to court and sue them. It could be a negotiation process. But you can't negotiate with somebody that you can't get to the table. So to me, rather than saying, hey, you can have jewels or land or, you know, inclusion in a club or whatever it is that they're trying to offer, I'd rather just say, hey, look, this is what, you know, we've lost and this is what you've gained by doing this to us. And, you know, um... I mean, I personally don't think people should profit from stuff like this, from from um, harming people and stealing their stuff. I think when pe you profit from that, and that's part of what colonialism is about and everything like that, you know, it's taking a wealthy country and re reducing it to rubble and then telling them that they're, um, I mean, by wealthy, I mean they have natural resources and all kinds of stuff. You come in there, you kill everybody, you reduce their country to rubble, and then you tell them that they're poor and that they're, you know, um, taking advantage of you, the colonizer. That's what this is. To me, this is the colon, co colonialism. What it's just and slavery. You know, it's slavery, which is part of colonialism. So this game to me is mind control because it's about you know. And so to, to present me and say, hey, these are your choices. You've won. These are your choices. But wait a minute, we might kill you. Probably will kill you anyway because we don't want to give you any of this stuff. This is BS. 
I'm not going to buy this. Maybe that's partly why I don't want to look at this card. I mean, it's just none of this makes any sense to me. This this is, you know, I'm looking at this card and I'm thinking of my fish tank. That's what it makes me think of. The goldfish tank that had the little che treasure chest at the bottom of it that would blow up with the bubbles. And when you looked inside, it had all these jewels and everything, but there were just plastic, glittery things that were stuck on the bottom of it. You couldn't, they weren't real. This isn't real. Nobody's going to give me anything. Especially not right now when, you know, they're still pretending that I don't even exist. Kind of a triggering card, I guess. I really, I really, you know, I mean, I never what cared for this kind of the mind control aspect of this and that, you know, um, the the pie in the sky kind of you know maybe that's partly why it was a cherry pie you know this sort of you know hey boom. you know these these ridiculous promises that you know you know push comes to shove people are not going to make good on because they don't there's no nobody's making them you can't have law and order if you don't have law and order and it's not law and order when you don't you know you don't have any kind of accountability and you don't have any kind of mechanism to enforce what your promises you know to make sure that somebody who promised something is going to come through on it but there's still a legal system in place and we still do have as i said over and over and over we still do have rights our rights were never you know there it's all written into the constitution that's, i'm an american citizen i don't care how many people are involved in this you know that's right now my concern is the united states i'm an american citizen i should never have had my rights you know um taken away and they're not taken away they're just not being respected but um, the Constitution says I'm an American citizen and I have all the rights in the Constitution. And as and you know, when you're born in this country, that's probably one of the most important things about being born in the United States is they, you know, you have these rights. They don't get to just take them away from you. And it says that very clearly in the Constitution, which, by the way, there has to be an active effort right now to destroy our Constitution, because I was really shocked at how hard it was to find even books you know, a decent book that talks about things like the Bill of Rights and stuff. What you get are these overcomplicated, you know, really overcomplicated uh, books that are overpriced, written by Harvard lawyers. Okay, the, the Bill of Rights is written at a third grade level, if not, you know, lower. It's so easy to understand. You know, I know that there's nuances, you know, in how things get litigated, but the Bill of Rights is extremely easy to understand. Very, very, very easy to understand basically what they're trying to say. So, um, you know, um, I think they've overcomplicated things, you know, um, in order to try to get a lot of guns into our society. And I'm getting off on the Second Amendment because that's the one that I'm less concerned about in this case. But, um, why aren't there, why, why aren't, why isn't there a bigger effort? to um, let Americans know that they have these rights. It actually seems that there's an effort to suppress Americans' knowledge that these rights exist. And I think that that's <laughs> part of the reason is my situation, because they want to justify what they've been doing to me and my, you know, and to Chris and my family, you know, and it's hard to, ju it's impossible to justify in the modern landscape of our, you know, of our legal system. It's impossible to justify this. So they just um, pretend it doesn't exist, and then they also sort of de-emphasize the rights. It's interesting how these cups have sort of a pyramid-shaped base. So they're actually um, pyramids with inverted pyramids on top. And look at, now that's interesting too, look at the, the rings around the middle. It looks like that drawing I did of what I called the tree of corruption. In the middle part of it, you know, um being certain inv individuals that are moderating between the top and the bottom. See, what I would like to do is get rid of these individuals. I mean, get rid of them, like d disempower them completely, whatever it takes to disempower them, because they are extreme. They're criminals. You cannot be doing this if you're not a criminal. And yes, I know that, you know, people have been empowered to do this. And, you know, um, yes, I know that they're linked to power and all this stuff doesn't make, mean they're not criminals. They are still criminals. The law says what the law says. This isn't okay.
At the very least, okay, they shouldn't have positions of power. They should no longer be in this position. They should no longer be allowed to, you know, create this type of corrupt situation. And um, they need to be removed. And at this point, I feel like whatever it takes to remove them, they need to be removed. I think they should have been removed a long time ago through peaceful legal means. But if that's not going to happen, then something's, they're going to be removed in another, another way. And I, I wish I could say that, that that with confidence, but unfortunately, I think some of these individuals have... Michael Payne is a perfect example. That person, why is that person even walking around? I have no idea. He is so bad. Well, I do have an idea. It's because he's linked with groups like the FBI, whose job it is to protect Americans from people like him. Some dreams were transportation dreams, trying to find a proper vehicle to take a trip, something safe. Children also being transported. The idea of a commercial jet flying low over Portland, like as if to look at Portland. Um, <clears throat> transportation dreams are almost always just time-wasting dreams, more or less, as far as I can tell when I actually do remember them and write them down. Um, I don't usually get much out of them. But it did remind me about all the air, the way air traffic is, has changed over my home in the past five years. Um, in 2015, especially, you know, probably just starting right in January 2015, I had a lot of different planes buzzing my apartment. And I didn't pay, I didn't go out like I am now and look at the planes. And, you know, I didn't have a camera even to photograph them because my camera was stolen um, my mom helped get my camera stolen, and she refused to help me get a new camera. Um, I mean, she literally helped my camera. You know, that was just one of the many betrayals. You know, you get end up with so many betrayals from certain people that you just, they end up just disappearing from your thoughts. But um, I wasn't, I wasn't really confused about what was going on, and it didn't really, I don't even know if I really thought that hard about photographing stuff back then, because I knew anything I did, I was trying to actually listen to what I was being told, because I thought that, oh, if I just kind of figure out what these people want from me, you know, as far as my behavior or whatever, um, then everything's going to work out, but that's not what was going on. They were just wasting my time, they were just confusing me on purpose, they were making me doubt myself, my thought, you know, it was just, a, it was just, a, but the planes were interesting, because at that time, um, I'm, and I'm not saying that about the planes specifically, I'm talking about the people who were surrounding me, the, the quote-unquote clubs, you know, I think that's what they were. I don't know if this game is rigged up so that, you know, when the person, you know, that this was something that was actually supposed to happen, and this was all during the Obama administration, and um, I don't pay a lot of attention to Trump. I kind of try to leave Trump alone and hope that Trump will leave me alone because um, things have actually improved for me under Trump. And I don't know if it has anything to do with Trump or not, but um, that's the truth. That things have improved for me under Trump. But um, in 2015, I was getting buzzed by a lot of aircraft, but I don't think they were like now. I think all the aircraft that fly over me almost entirely are either law enforcement or military, except for maybe some of those drones that are... Um, playing games with me, but even they are doing that with the, you know, permission and knowledge of law enforcement and military, I'm sure, because, you know, that's the sky. <laughs> so, um, but back then, it seemed like I was getting buzzed by a lot of um, private planes, like pr planes where um, you might have, like, five or ten people. I'm not really familiar with all the types of planes that exist for people, but they were like, you know, people planes that rich people would have. They were the ones that were buzzing me in 2015. And um, it was like, at, at a point, it was like they were all lined up in the sky. I mean, I really kind of wish that I had taken video of it because it was really pretty incredible. And they would buzz right over my apartment. And so it would be like, bzzz, 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 you know, in the mornings and, and in the middle of the night even, you know, and... Um, and then all of a sudden, maybe there'd be a day when there'd be no air traffic at all. You know, it's just, um, really random. I mean, not random, but, um, very bizarre. And, um, one of the striking things to me was that Chris didn't notice it. And I'd call attention to, it. I said, don't you hear all these planes buzzing over us? And he was, 
he somehow has been so conditioned that he really, truly, it just, he doesn't notice that stuff. You know, we have all these planes, like one a minute, practically, not practically, one a minute at times, you know, flying over us loudly. And it didn't even phase him. It's very, very strange. And, um, and then I was going to PCC at that time. There was a white, little white jet that used to follow me all around town. <laughs> I mean, it was really, that was strange. Every once in a while, we kind of dive down low, but it just sort of was always there in the sky, you know, not always every second, but you know, like I'd see it several times a day, a white jet, specific white jet. Um, I'd be riding along on the max and look out the window and that thing would be out there. Um, and then there was, you know, a couple times, well, one time in particular at PCC, when all of a sudden all this commercial traffic was routed over PCC Cascade campus, which I know I never saw, um, generally commercial traffic there. But then one day, you know, all of a sudden all this commercial traffic is flying over these commercial jets. Um, um, so, you know, in this part of Portland, at least, you know, over the past year or two, I have not seen w w any commercial traffic or, you know, if I have, it's been extremely rare. I don't think I really have. There is an airport, you know, not that far away, but planes don't fly over, over my apartment. Um, so yeah, the air traffic situation has been interesting. So I'm going to go look at shaved fish. <laughs>